In this tutorial, we can use the drawing and layout tools in Aspire or VGarth Pro to design this open sign. We're going to use the drawing tools from the drawing tab on the left hand side of the interface and also import a piece of vector clip art for the actual open sign in the middle. We're then going to move on and calculate toolpaths. So we'll calculate toolpaths for the flat bottom V carving to leave the open sign raised. We'll also calculate drilling toolpaths a chamfered edge toolpath and also a final toolpath to cut the sign out but leaving tabs in place. The first thing I need to do is close this file. So file, close. You'll see here that we're using VCarve Pro for the tutorial and the procedures and techniques are exactly the same for both VCarve Pro and Aspire. I'm going to create a new file. So a new file Specify the size of the, the design or size of the sign that we're going to carve. In this case, we're going to create a 15 inch by 10 inch file using half an inch thick material. Z0 to be on the surface of the material. This is the, the point that you would reference the tip of the cutter on the control software. So Z0 is on the material surface. We want the X, Y origin to be in the middle of our piece of material. So the faint or light grey lines shown in the two-dimensional view where they cross, this is X0, Y0. And click OK. So the software has opened the drawing tab on the left-hand side of the screen and we have our two-dimensional drawing view. I'm going to start by drawing some simple ovals. We want the ovals to be at X0, Y0. We'll draw the first one 12 inches wide by 7.5 inches high. And create. Let's draw a second one slightly larger 13 by 8.5 inches and create. So there we have our close the form two ovals. Next thing we're going to import a piece of vector clip art for the open sign to sit in the center of the sign. So to do that we say import vector data. We can import DXF files, DWG, EPS, Adobe Illustrator, vector data from PDF files and also file formats from the, the other Vectric products. You'll see here in the sample files folder there's a, an EPS file called opensign.eps. We open this you'll notice that the file gets opened in the top right hand corner. The open sign vector data has been drawn in the same position that the graphic designer drew it which is not in the right position for us and we can click a second time and click and drag with the left mouse button to drag the information to the required position or we can use the align centrally material tool so align centrally and you'll see that the open sign jumps to the center of our sign we can change the size of it by clicking on the little white handles here so I can click and drag to change the size if I hold the shift key down it scales relative to the center of the selected vectors. So we can click to an approximate size. If we want this to be an exact size, we can say scale the selected vectors. In this case, let's make it nine inches wide. The height is scaled proportionately and apply. Close the form. So the distance across there is exactly nine inches. We're now ready to calculate our first set of toolpaths. So we're going to swap from the drawing tab on the left by clicking the the switch to toolpath tab icon to the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the screen just check the material setup so we're going to use half inch thick material z0 on the origin a retract or clearance height of 0.2 and at the end of the machining we want the cutter to retract an inch above the material click ok we're going to calculate what's called a flat bottom or v sorry a flat bottom v carve toolpath or an engraved toolpath so we're going to machine drag and select the open sign if we just machine inside those selected vectors we'd have a negative or a, an engraved toolpath inside each of the letters if we hold the shift key down and select the inner oval the toolpath will now be calculated from the edge of the oval up to each of the letters we're going to cut the toolpath quarter of an inch deep We'll use a 90 degree V-bit cutter to get the, the detail. 
but because we've got some large flat areas here we're going to use a initially use a what's called a flat bottom area clearance tool for that we'll use a quarter inch m mil so we've got the oval selected and the open sign we're going to say calculate and this gives us two toolpaths first toolpath is the the toolpath for the end mill so click and drag the left mouse button to twiddle the preview form has automatically opened so preview this toolpath this shows us the material that will be removed by the quarter inch end mill if we add some color to this toolpath so dark red click with the right and push with the right mouse button you'll see that the the quarter inch end mill is too big to pick out any of the detail around the lettering so we would then change the cutter to the v-bit or an engraving cutter and this will mach machine where it needs to to give us the finished detail so we say preview this toolpath and you'll see it's chamfering the edges on the open sign logo and if we give this toolpath some color so the same color you'll see that would be the result of cutting the this particular sign using these two cutters quarter inch m mil and the 90 degree v carving bit we're now ready to calculate another toolpath to machine a chamfered edge around our sign so i'm going to say close the preview form we go back to the drawing tab so swap switch from to from the toolpath tab on the right to the drawing tab on the left now here we have the draw 2d view in the 3d view and we can swap between these in the top right hand sorry top left hand corner here or we can tile the two views so tile the views so split them horizontally so we have the 2d view and the three-dimensional view makes it much easier to select different vectors and see what the results are in the toolpath view so now we're going to select the out of the oval swap back to the toolpath menu calculate a profiling toolpath we'll cut it quarter of an inch deep we'll use the same half inch diameter 90 degree uh, v bit we'll profile around the outer edge of this selected oval and calculate the toolpath we'll see that the toolpath has been calculated around if we zoom in in the two dimensional view this is the selected vector this is the center line for the toolpath so the toolpath is cutting on the outer edge of the oval and it's going in a counterclockwise direction if we preview this toolpath so preview that would be the result if we add some color let's make this a dark so dark bluey greeny color we click and twiddle with the right hand mouse button and zoom in you'll see now we've got a little chamfer around the outer edge of our sign next i need to draw some circles to draw some mounting holes so to do that we close the preview go back to the drawing tab i'm going to draw the i'm, I'm panning by clicking and holding the the, the roller mouse button on, on, the, on my mouse clicking and holding and it will pan around so we're going to draw a circle here and a circle here so to do that we very simply say draw a circle quarter inch diameter now we can click in the two dimensional view and it will draw a circle for us if we click on the other end it will draw another circle while we've got this one selected if I say this circle needs to be at 6.25 inches negative uh, in the x di dimension and on the the y axis and apply it will jump to the exact position if i click on the right hand side we want this one to be plus 6.25 inches and also exactly on the y axis so apply again and it's jumped into position close the form now if i click and hold the shift key to select both of the little circles we swap to the machining toolpath sorry the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the screen this time we're going to calculate a, a drilling toolpath so create a drilling toolpath we're going to drill all the way through our piece of material so i'm going to actually drill say 30 thousandths deeper than the so 30 thousandths through the material let's select a tool so in this case we're going to use a drill we'll use a quarter inch drill bit here we specify the the size of the bits the pass depth so here we're saying cut quarter of an inch pass uh, pass depth so 
it will will end up with three passes one at quarter of an inch deep another one at half an inch deep and a final pass cutting to full depth this is the spindle speed and the feed rate that we plunge at calculate the drilling tool path and the tool path will be calculated at the center of the selected circles the software is now warning us that the this is going to cut 30 thousandths deeper than my material is this okay if you've got some sacrificial board on the on the table of the machine this is okay if you were cutting onto a steel bed then you probably wouldn't accept this so we'll click OK the toolpath has now been calculated for us if we preview the results we'll see there's the toolpath drilling the holes the mounting holes for us in the edge of the sign next we're going to cut the, cut the sign out so we're going to profile machine around the outer edge of the oval to cut the sign free so we close the preview view go back to the profile machining tab so profile we're going to machine all the way through the material so half an inch let's make it ten thousandths deeper to make sure it cleans through select the tool let's say we're going to cut it cut the sign out with our quarter inch end mill around the outside so now if I say calculate the software warns me that the tool path is going to cut through the material click OK and there's our toolpath calculated you'll see here in the two-dimensional view the toolpath has been offset around the outer outermost edge by the radius of the cutter if I double click to edit this toolpath let's give this a different name so we'll, just to make it clearer so we'll, we'll say cut out but I don't want this I don't want it cutting right up to the edge because we have a chamfer here so I'm going to say I want an allowance on there of say 150 thousandths so it will cut further away plus we say F to zoom to fit what I really want is we want to add some tabs to this project so instead of cutting all the way through and finding that the sign breaks free I'm going to say add some tabs that are half an inch long eighth of an inch thick edit the tabs and so I automatically want the software to place four tabs equally spaced on the sorry we just need to select the outer oval there so we'll say edit the tabs we want four to be equally spaced so the little green nodes represent where the tabs will be placed calculate yes we're happy for the toolpath to run we maximize the three-dimensional view you'll see the the little bridges there these are the tabs that are going to hold the, the sign in place if we preview this toolpath we now see that we've got we've got four tabs that are, that are going to hold the sign in place and stop the sign from breaking free so just to summarize if we go back to the drawing view so two-dimensional view we've drawn some ovals we've imported some clip art and sized the clip art we've drawn some holes for the drill holes we go back to the three-dimensional view swap to the toolbar tab on the right preview reset the preview so we've got a toolpath that's going to pocket machine using our quarter inch end mill so preview that toolpath we would then change the cutter for the engraving bit or the V carving bit to give us the detail. Run that toolpath on the machine. This will give us our the, the very precise and decorative uh, 3D V carving or engraving toolpaths. We then profile machine a chamfer around the sign. Drill some holes and finally cut the piece out but instead of cutting all the way through we've added little bridges that are going to hold the piece hold the project in place and stop it breaking free when we're happy with the toolpaths we'd say close we can estimate the machining time so the software is estimating that it would take us about 18 minutes to machine this sign we get an estimated time for each of the different toolpaths close the uh, the window 
we can then save the toolpath so save toolpaths select each toolpath in turn select the post processor for your machine save the toolpath give it a, a, a specific name and it's ready to run on your CNC machine thank you for watching the tutorial